Hello, everyone. My name is Yuan Yuan. I am a PhD student in the Systems Biology Research Group here at UC San Diego. In this video, I want to discuss the results from a recently published study using iModular analysis to understand the transcriptional regulatory network of the model cyanobacterium synecococcus elongatus. Synecococcus elongatus, or S. elongatus for short, is an interesting subject to study for many different reasons. First of all, it has interesting biology. It has a circadian rhythm, meaning that its gene regulation responds to different light cues, such as sunlight and darkness. It has the ability to perform photosynthesis, meaning that it can harness sunlight as a power source and sequester carbon dioxide, and these holds great significance to addressing environmental concerns. Uh, additionally, it has a tractable genome, making it a great candidate for genetic manipulation and genetic engineering uh, for sustainable and biotechnological applications. And because of these important qualities, it is crucial for us to gain a fundamental understanding of its trans transcriptional regulatory network, or TRN, as that's what orchestrates this organism's response to different environmental variations. But many of the genes in this organism are poorly characterized and the TRN structure is poorly understood. So the motivation behind this study is to use iModular analysis, which is a machine learning based technique that has proven to be very helpful in elucidating microbial TRN structures and apply it to this organism with the hope of establishing a more global and holistic understanding of, its TRN, of the TRN structure of S. elongatus. We gathered all publicly available transcriptomic data of S. elongatus. And after quality control, 300 high quality expression profiles remained. And from those 300 profiles, we extracted a total of 57 iModulons. In this video, I wanna highlight two key results from the paper. First, I wanna discuss the iModulons related to photosynthesis. We found four iModulons that describe the functional units of the complex biological process of photosynthesis as seen in figure three of the paper. The structures in the diagram are colored based on if the gene in the corresponding iModulon codes for a protein in that structure. The two iModulons on the bottom left, colored in green, are associated with a light-dependent reaction of photosynthesis, where sunlight is captured and uh, energy is generated from the photosynthetic electron transport chain. The other two iModulons are associated with the light independent reactions where inorganic carbon is transported into the cell and fixed through the Kelvin cycle into organic molecules. We know that photosynthesis is a very complicated biological process involving different cellular structures and complex biochemical reactions. And because of that, it is difficult to study the functional units and understand them individually while still being able to connect them and see how they interact and come together. So iModulons simplify things by breaking complicated processes down into key parts. So you can focus on how each part works while still being able to investigate how they all interact and how they're connected. And this system level view doesn't just help us understand the parts of photosynthesis better, but also allows us to investigate how these parts connect with other processes in the cell. And it makes it easier to see how the cellular processes fits all together and works as a whole. The second result I want to highlight is how the changes in iModular activities can reveal the cell's dynamic response to environmental variations. Like I mentioned before, S. elongatus has a circadian rhythm and its gene regulation fluctuates with changes in light intensity. We have in our data collection samples from different light conditions, such as light intensity that mimics natural daylight from zero to 12 hours and complete darkness that mimics the night. And we also have um, light variations such as sudden light pulse or sudden shade pulse. And we identify several iModulons that are mostly, that are most responsive to the changes in light intensity and their activity profiles demonstrate the cell's dynamic response to changing light. So we found several iModulons whose activity show patterns over time in daylight and in darkness. For example, the photosystems iModulon show high activity in the clear day condition and it is involved in harvesting light in the light-dependent reaction, but shows low activity in the dark, meaning that it's not active in darkness. 
We also see that amoxicillin related to the key circadian regulator, RPAA, its activity increased from dawn to dusk, peaking at dusk. Additionally, we discovered a group of amoxicillin that's most sensitive to abrupt light changes, as shown in figure five of the paper. We noticed that amoxicillin related to RPAA and RPAB, two key regulators involved in circadian rhythm, are sensitive to changes in light. High light intensities activate them, while low light corresponds to a lower activity. The same trend is observed for the translation-related amoxicillin's ribosome 1 and 2. And this suggests that the cells are reprogramming their transcription and translation to adjust for the changes in light. The result also highlights the importance of two relatively undercharacterized amoxicillin's RPAC and competence and we can see their importance in sensing and responding to various light conditions. Interestingly, while most amoxicillins show opposite activity trends for high light and shade pulse, we see the photosystems amoxicillin exhibit low activity for both conditions. In the shade pulse, this is likely the result of reduced light availability because it has less light to capture. But in high light conditions, this might reflect a phenomenon called photoinhibition, which is caused by um, an imbalance between the rate of photo damage to the photosystems and the rate of the photosystems uh, complex repair, as excess light energy can be actually toxic to an organism as it damages the photosynthetic machinery and other cellular components. So by analyzing amodular activities, we can spot which amodula are controlled by the circadian clock and which responds to changes in light levels and breaking down this complex light response into individual amoxicillins help us to focus on specific areas and give us insight into how the underlying regulatory systems work. I would like to emphasize three key impacts of this study. First, amoxicillins presented in this study expands our current understanding of gene regulation as agatis. The two results highlighted in this video demonstrate how we can use amoxicillins to pull complex systems apart and study the functional units individually while maintaining a system level of understanding, and the fluctuations in amoxicillin activity can uh, capture dynamic responses of the transcriptome in this organism. Each individual amoxicillin provides a story we can exploit to enhance our understanding of this organism. Second, our modules propose knowledge-enriched and testable hypotheses for future investigations. I highly recommend giving the whole paper a read, as in the sections I didn't discuss in this video, we go into details about what we learned about key regulators and metabolic processes using modules, and we propose potential regular structure and functional gene annotations based on module analysis. These can serve as the basis for targeted investigations and validation studies. Third, the 57 amoxicillins from the study provides a tentative global TRN structure for SNL GATIS for the first time. We published all the amoxicillins generated in the study for further inspections of interested researchers, and they can all be found on amoxicillindb.org under the SNL GATIS page. Through this online interactive dashboards, researchers can browse all the amoxicillins generated from our study. They can look for their genes of interest in our amoxicillins, they can inspect amodular activities under specific environmental conditions, and they can look at correlations between different amodules. We believe these information can be invaluable to interested researchers. And with this first global TRN structure, we're laying the foundation for future improvements and updates to this model as we keep adding and um, exploring new experimental conditions in our data set. Thank you for watching the video. I hope the results we cover sparked your curiosity. And if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out the full paper in PAS.